our ability as doctors to help people to not suffer is um, extremely important to us. I mean, it's why most people have gone into medicine, is to help people not suffer. What we saw as young doctors in training during the 70s and 80s in New York City was really the ravages of the heroin epidemic, how that had morphed into the HIV epidemic. And for me and many people who trained during that era, it was, it was profound. What struck Dr. Julia Arnston was the prevailing thinking that unless people who were addicted to drugs were cured of their addiction, they couldn't be successfully treated for other chronic conditions, such as HIV infection. When she joined Einstein and Montefiore in 1996, her research focused on how to give people with opioid dependence access to treatment for their HIV. Dr. Arnston reasoned that since the methadone treatment program required a nurse to distribute the medication to patients through directly observed therapy, it could also be used to deliver antiretroviral drugs at the same time, thus increasing adherence. Her study was a success. What we showed was that those patients had dramatically better adherence to their antiretroviral therapies and dramatically better health outcomes with respect to their HIV, their AIDS. So their HIV viral load, which is a measure of HIV activity, was markedly suppressed compared to the control condition. And their CD4 count, which is another marker of immune health, was dramatically increased compared to the control condition. Dr. Arnston also realized that there weren't enough physicians who were trained to treat addiction. In 2002, she won a grant from the National Institutes of Health to create a first-of-its-kind training program, setting Einstein and Montefiore at the forefront of substance use research, training, and treatment. We have an enhanced curriculum in substance use disorders for medical students and residents and really teach them how to identify, treat, and diagnose substance use disorders. The other aim of the grant is to increase the number of researchers like myself who are working in the field of chronic medical disease and addiction by having an intensive two-year training period for young faculty members who've just completed residency. Hey, what's going on? One of the other physician scientists who teaches and mentors the junior faculty is Dr. Chinazo Cunningham. Since early in her career, she has championed the use of a relatively new drug, buprenorphine, as an alternative to methadone, the most commonly used opioid dependence medication. So methadone has been around for about 50 years, and we have a whole different way that we deliver treatment with methadone than we do with other parts of the healthcare system. So people have to go to a um, methadone treatment program. Typically when people start, they have to come six days a week. They have to swallow the medication right in front of a nurse. Um, they have to see counselors. Uh, they need to give urine drug tests. And so the way in which the treatment is delivered really can impinge on people's lives. And buprenorphine is special because it can be used in any setting by any kind of doctor. The doctor just has to get eight hours of training. And actually now it can be a nurse practitioner and physician assistant as well. People can go to the pharmacy and get a 30-day supply. They can get refills. And so our ability to really scale up treatment with a medication like buprenorphine is really potentially enormous. For decades in this country, the need for treatment has hugely overshadowed actual delivery of treatment. And so, for every 10 people that need treatment, only one or two people actually get treatment. So we have a long way to go, and buprenorphine can really fill that gap. I had been on methadone, I want to say, for a few years, um, and it was kind of just interfering with my everyday life, you know, having to go to the, to the clinic every day. I can actually go into an office in the privacy of my doctor's office and get treatment. What an amazing feeling. You know, we come in and it's just me visiting my primary doctor. There's a lot of stigma around addiction. Um, so in this country, we really kind of think about addiction as a moral shortcoming. And in the medical profession, we're really beginning to see that, you know, this is really a chronic medical condition. So it needs treatment, not incarceration. Um, that there's medications that work, that if there's no cure, 
that it's lifelong management of a chronic illness in the same way that diabetes or hypertension or heart disease are. And so, you know, we could talk about people losing weight and they're, you know, they need to lose weight because they have diabetes in the same way that people with addiction need to reduce their, their substance use. But, we, but the languages we use to talk about diabetes and addiction are completely different. But the reality is, is they are not different. They're both chronic illnesses, they both have medications that treat them, and they both require substantial behavioral changes that are hard to do. It's hard to lose weight. It's hard to stop using substances. It's the same thing. There's no difference. If we, if we can remember that we would like um, compassion for our own shortcomings, and that when you know, we fall down and don't meet our own expectations, we would like that to be seen by others in a compassionate way, then that can help us to look at other people who are certainly have shortcomings and are disappointing themselves as much as they are disappointing us. You're used to people, you know, kind of shaming you and you're used to having like this stigma. It doesn't matter how confident of a person you are, the minute you come across these medical professionals that are kind of just like pointing the finger at you and, you know, shaking their heads and stuff, you, you know, it brings you down. When I first met Dr. Cunningham, I I was like, well, who is this woman? Where does she come from? Um, I have never in my entire life met a doctor that I felt was, was real. God, that changed life for me in ways that I'd never even thought possible. For me, it's very important to give a voice to people who are often unseen and unheard. As a primary care provider, there are very few things that I do where I can see sort of fairly immediate results. But with this addiction treatment, people's lives really change right in front of my eyes. That's really powerful and that, you know, will bring me back over and over to really help people change their lives and change their health.